Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter Fast Asleep. Welcome to Games Made Easy. So I've received a few requests to do a video on board games I find fun for children and adults to play together. Because there's so many wonderful games out there, sometimes it's really hard to choose. Having said that, today I'm going to teach you and give you some tips on how to play three great games. We're going to start with For Sale and then we're going to have a look at Dixit and we are going to finish with Cockroach Poker. What I enjoy the most in these three games is that you can learn to play them in five minutes. They are great fun for everyone. And because there's almost nothing written, even young children can play them. They're also very easy to carry around. If you don't take the boxes, they don't take much space. And they can be played with up to six players, which is not very common. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. For Sale is a quick fun game where three to six players compete to buy and sell property to become the biggest real estate mogul. Now the game plays in two separate phases. First you buy, then you sell. Easy right? Not so fast. To win, you will need to learn how to bid, how to bluff and read your opponents so that you can pay as little as possible for high valued properties and sell your lowest valued properties as high as possible. In for sale, there's two decks of cards. You have the green one and the blue one. Now, the green one is the property deck with 30 properties ranging from a cardboard box at one to a magnificent space station at 30. There's a lot of uh, properties in between these two that are super interesting. Now, the blue deck is the currency deck, which has also 30 cards and they range from zero to 15,000. It skips 1,000 and you have two of each. You also have a ton of coins. Now you give each player 18,000 on a three to four player game. Now on a five to six player, you'll remove four because you'll give 14,000. Then you shuffle both decks and you're going to put the currency deck on the side for now. The properties will now be auctioned and every player will have the opportunity to bid for them. Okay, so here we'll set up for four players. Start by dealing face up in the middle of the table a number of properties equal to the number of players. If you're playing with children, it's a good idea to put them in order. Draw for first place and the bidding starts. Now the first player can either bid or pass. To start the bidding, you simply place some coins on the table in front of you. Now, in this case, I'm going to be the first player. So I'm going to put 3,000 here. Then in clockwise order, the bidding continues. Now, a bid always needs to be higher than the previous value put in place. So in this case, it has to be at least 4,000 or more. That player is going to increase the bid to, let's say, 5,000. Now, the next player, the third player here, is going to pass. Each time a player passes, he or she takes the face-up card with the lowest number. If the player did not bid anything, the card is free, which in this case it is. So it will take this card and place it face down. Now the fourth player decides to pass as well and will take as well the lowest card in play, which is the seven here. Takes it and places it face down. Now it's back to me. I have a choice to increase the bid or to pass. If I increase the bid, I would have to put at least 6,000. So I'm going to pass. When I pass, I take again the lowest value card in play, which is this one. And in this case, I did not win the bidding. So I take back half of the bid, rounded down. So for instance, in this case, I only pay 2,000 to the bank and I'm gonna take 1,000 back. That's why sometimes it's better to bid even numbers. Now that player won the bidding. So they're going to take the last card remaining and they're going to pay everything they put in the bid to the bank. The player who's just won the bidding will deal a new set of cards and will either start bidding or pass. Now this will continue until all the properties have been sold. Now in a four player game, you'll discard the last two properties. Now a good tip at this point is try not to spend all your money because they are points at the end of the game. Now that we've sold all the properties, the second phase begins. That's where we're going to sell all the properties we've just bought. So as in phase one, the same number of currency cards as the number of players are turned face up on the table. Like we did with the properties, we put them in order so that it's just easier. 
So each player now will pick one of their properties and place it face down in front of them. Now you've seen I've done it for these three players. So I'm going to show you with my deck what, what I'm doing. Now here I have a choice. I have, I can either go for the highest value, which is a 14,000 here and play one of my high valued properties, but I know maybe the other players are going to do that. And I know there's a, another two 15,000 and one more 14,000. So maybe I'll just get rid of my, one of my low valued properties and take the zero, which I'm going to do that. So I place it face down. Once everyone is face down, we reveal the cards at the same time. Now, we distribute it by the value of the property. So in this case, I will take the lowest valued. So I take that, I place it face down. We discard the properties we've sold. Now the second one is this one. So they're gonna take this one. And this one takes this card and they take the highest valued currency card. Then what we'll do is we get distribute a new set of cards and this goes on and on until all the properties have been sold. Now players add up all the currency cards and their coins. The richest player wins the game. Now in case of a tie, the player with the most coins wins. Now for sale will last about 20 to 30 minutes only. It's great fun, especially when all the players have played a few games. Another great game for children and adults to play together is Dixit. Now, Dixit is a guessing game for three to six players. It is very different to any other game out there and it's absolutely gorgeous. Each player at their turn will become a storyteller while others will need to guess which of these beautiful cards the storyteller is using. If you guess correctly and are a good storyteller, you can be the first to reach 30 points and win the game. So you start Dixit by placing the scoreboard in the middle of the table. Then each player selects a color and places their bunny on the starting space of the scoreboard here. Now you also take the number tokens you need. You have the same color as the color of the bunny and you pick the same number of tokens as the number of players. So in this case, it's a four player game. So you're going to pick up to four and you're going to discard the five and six. Then you're going to shuffle the deck of cards and you're going to distribute six cards to each player. Each turn there's one active player and that player is the storyteller for that turn. The storyteller looks at the images on the six cards in hand and from one of them selects a word or a sentence that will describe that card. Now be careful not to be too specific, too obvious or too cryptic. If all the other players guess correctly or if it's so cryptic that none of them gets it, then the storyteller doesn't score anything. So say for instance, if you say going on an adventure, that can be very generic and it could apply to this one, this one and this one. Now you can also become too specific and say, girl playing the cello or music. You also need to make sure you understand your audience. The clues won't be the same if you play with children or with adults. For instance, you could say sadness for children in this case, but you could use sadness for an adult here. Also, you cannot give clues that are so personal that only one player would know. Without showing it, the storyteller places the card face down in the middle of the table. Then all the other players at the same time find a card in their hand that best matches the description of the storyteller and gives it to the storyteller. Then the storyteller will shuffle all the received cards and all the cards are shown face up and placed on the side of the scoreboard so that they each have a number assigned to them. It's important once the cards have been revealed that nobody talks about them or the game to avoid giving any hint, even by mistake. At this point, each player knows his own card, but needs to guess which card was the one from the storyteller. Once they think they know, they select one of the number tokens and give it face down to the storyteller. Of course, the storyteller doesn't select a card. Once all players have done their selection, the storyteller flips the tokens and the judging can begin. In this case, the storyteller's card was this one and it was sadness. Now we usually put the tokens in their respective numbers. Now the best case scenario for the storyteller is if some players, but not all, guess the correct card, like here. Now in this case, the storyteller and whoever found the correct answer score three points. So who scores three points and the green player as well, three points. If nobody or everybody finds the correct card, the storyteller scores zero and each of the other players scores two. The players who guess this card, that player will also get 
extra points. In this case, it was the green player's card. So the green player would make an extra two points. Once the points are counted and scored, each player takes a new card from the deck. Now the player who's on the left of the storyteller will become the new active player. There are some slight variations in a three player game. Players will receive seven cards instead of six. And while the storyteller will only play one card, the other two players will play two cards. So there will be a total of five cards in play. That's why you'll need the number tokens from one to five. The voting and scoring remains the same. The game ends as soon as a player reaches 30 points or we run out of cards in the deck, in which case the player with the most points wins the game. Now Dixit takes about half an hour. It's a great game and it gets even better when there are more players. Another great game for children and adults to play together is Cockroach Poker. It has nothing to do with poker. Well, maybe just the bluffing part. Cockroach Poker will get everyone super excited. This two to six player game is quite different as it stops as soon as one player is eliminated, everybody else wins. There are 64 cards representing eight families of critters. Now, each of these has eight members. Now, your goal is to force one player to collect four of cards of the same family. As soon as this happens, they lose the game and everybody else wins. To set up a game, you're going to shuffle and distribute all the cards face down between all the players. At three, five and six players, you won't have the same number of cards and that's okay. Just make sure you distribute all of them. Then the youngest player starts. You select one card from your hand and you place it face down on the table and then you slide it to another player announcing one of the eight types of critters. So for instance, in this case, I will say, this is a bat. Now the player who receives the card has two choices, take it or peek. If he takes it, then in this case, he can either accept the card saying true or false and then reveal the card. If that claim is wrong, they keep the card on the table in front of them face up. If they are right, the player who gave the card keeps it face up. So say this player says, it's true. I said it was a bat, it's true. Reveals it, it is a bat, it is true. So the bat comes back to the player who gave it. Now, another option is, say for example, he hadn't taken it, another option is to peek at the card. Then that player passes it face down to another player saying the original type of critter or changing it to a new type. So this player is gonna say, this is a rat to this player here. Now this player is going to take it and will say, it's true. It's not a rat, it's a bat. So this player is wrong. This player keeps the card. Note that you cannot pass the card to a player who's already seen it. So at one point, a player will have to accept the card. Whoever lost the challenge and took a card will start the next round. The game ends when a player needs to play a card but has no more. Or as soon as a player picks a fourth member of the same critter family. In both cases, this player loses and everyone else wins. That's it for three of our favorite games that are fun for children and adults to play together. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you would like me to teach. I will make more games easy soon. Bye now.